Hey guys, it's about time they actually started updating Blender 4.0 with some of the new features. We know it's already going to be packed with some of the 3.6, but finally it's some new features! Okay, well, if I could create lightning, I wouldn't be doing this. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started, and I'm going to show you some of these new features. Alright guys, some cool stuff going on today. They came out with another iteration of 4.0 Alpha, and it is the branch from June 12th, 2023. And this one's pretty cool. Uh, so if you don't know how to get your splash screen, it's right up here on the little Blender button. Just click that, and it'll give access to some of your recent files. Uh, you can switch to video editing. You can create a new um, fresh copy of Blender to start some things over if you wish. Now, for one of those things, I've been kind of like waiting for them to do this because oh, I don't have um, machine tools and some of these other things installed on every single version. And I flip a lot of versions because I create add-ons and I'm doing a lot of stuff. So you go up to edit and go to preferences and that's not the right one. Let me show you this one. So if you just go ahead and save your very first file, whatever it is, you save it, then you have the option to click save incrementally. That's pretty cool. So if I was to go in here and open this, now I'm gonna see that I saved the first file, I saved the second file, which is this one, and it's the exact same file. But every time I click the Control-Alt-S, uh, it's gonna save an incremental copy of what I did. So it's kind of like a progressive workflow. You can uh, go back to some different iterations of whatever you're working on. All right, so I've deleted the other copies and just kept this one so we can kind of see how the changes go and kind of watch the behavior of this. And so if I was to scale this and make a copy, it'd be pretty easy to see that change right there. Actually, I'll just rotate it a little bit, make it a little crazier looking. And if I just hit Control S, save that, and then recycle this, Control S is going to overwrite the current copy. It will not overwrite previous iterations. It's only going to overwrite what you're on. So if I hit Control Alt S and then recycle this, I now have Untitled Blend and Untitled One. And so then if I was to grab this and kind of scale it out crazy looking and just hit Control S, then the behavior is going to change. You can see that's blocking the entire screen now. And so if I maybe scale that bad boy down, move it over, and just kind of move this so I can see, I'll make a couple of copies of that and then hit Control Alt S and then recycle. And so now I've got all these different iterations I can go through and go back to. So don't forget, that's how that works. And it would be good to see save incremental, right click, add to favorites. So you can press Q, then you can do an incremental save. And that's going to be good. That's actually something I'm going to add to my add-on because it does work in Blender 3.6 and 4.0. So I'll be adding that feature. And enough of that. Uh, let's go ahead and bring over a file so you guys can see it. This is one of the updates that is actually pretty cool. I think it's going to save people a lot of trouble. Um, you can now register and unregister Blender and load specifically uh, all your files with one version if you want to consolidate instead of continuously opening with other versions and potentially breaking your uh, Blend files. So let's look at that. If you go to Edit and Preferences, you can go right over to System, which is where I was at first, and you'll see that now you can register this version. Um, and you can have it set for all users, or you can unregister that version so it stops opening. And that's going to be a pretty big deal. And we'll just look at the deeper notes here on that real quick. The Windows File Association using the PROG ID or Program ID needed because of the launcher. This fixes the pin to taskbar which is important if you're in Windows, and the recent documents list allowing a per version jump in its list. And if I go back real quick, you'll see that you'll be able to open with different versions if that's how you've got it set up. But that's pretty cool. You guys had to take a little bit of a break uh, from all the tutorials and the add-on creation and just make something. So I got this little procedural staircase I'm working on. But let's get back to what we were doing.
So in the last video I had talked about, well a couple of videos back about the new bevel geometry node that's coming. Well guess what? We're going to get a new principal BSDF which is going to be um, somewhat along the same lines as the previous one only this one is going to handle a lot more and a lot better. It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be recoded and I won't go over everything. Just keep this quick but I will put the video in the link. Uh, down below so you guys can go check that out and when you go down there smash that subscribe and smash that like button but there's some really cool stuff going on the base layer setup and or setups if you will and you'll just have to pause the video to kind of go back because I took some screenshots here um, pretty cool thing uh, there's some issues where subsurface scattering other things like that you know uh, kind of conflict and I can't describe it as good as this guy but they create shadows that you know, um, conflict with each other and so he's fixing all of that and effectively what this is going to turn out to be is a physically based render node, okay? It's going to have some user controls but it's going to be out of the box PBR and it's going to be ready to go. There are some additional upgrades for the coloring and how the IOR, the index of refraction is going to work with glass. It's going to look a little bit better. And here's the uh, input layout as it is now. So you can take a look at this, pause the video, check it out, and screenshot that if you want. Uh, I'm not going to stay on that too long. And I did want to go over one thing. I don't know if you guys knew this from the last version, but if you drop in any type of mesh, really doesn't matter uh, what it is. Uh, you can actually change the orientation of it. So if I rotate this, on 45 degrees right here and I want to grab the face because I want to cover this tunnel and I just go ahead and maybe hit G and X or Y or Z it's just gonna start fussing right and you can double tap G X Y and get different points um, so you can move it but what makes a lot more sense is that the transform you can come over here and just hit plus and it's already on face for us so now if I hit G and Z, this thing's going to just go straight up, which is so much better. So if I was going to say scale that up, I now have that on its own orientation. And if I want to make this some kind of crazy render where I can see up my staircase and whatever else is going on, I can do that. But anyways, uh, don't forget, guys, I got some free add-ons over on Gumroad. I'll put a link down there for that. And I do have some studio-grade add-ons that really help you out uh, with setting up preset scenes, lighting, and IES textures. And so, uh, yeah, that's it. Blender 4.0 has got a ton of stuff packed in it. It's coming. A bunch more is coming. And I can't wait for the final releases of this and, of course, 3.6 LTS to be final. So, as always, thanks for stopping by. See you guys next one. Let's get started.